Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Super Prime UK with your Super Prime MJ Group values. Myself, Rob Cohen. And myself, James Wilde. So excited to be back. We've had a few weeks off, lots to talk about. Things are hotting up and not only the weather. James. Yeah, thanks very much, Rob. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> I mean, it, t taking the market as a whole over the last 12 months, we haven't seen, um, <clears throat> you know, huge volumes of activity, both in terms of uh, the transaction volumes, but also in terms of the, the prices have been relatively steady uh, across most uh, of the residential sectors. The last few weeks, uh, in terms of new instructions, they've been above 400 per week uh, in London. So uh, a bit of positivity there, Rob. And in terms of the sold numbers for last week, uh, reaching 142. Um, so that's you know well above the average we've seen uh, for the year. Furthermore, we had uh, sale of the week uh, last week. Rob was uh, down the Pitt Estate, uh, 22 and a half million pounds. So uh, just a, uh, a, a gentle reminder there that uh, the super prime London market, uh, things are still trading. There is activity within that market. And, and that is a market which which is performing uh, better than the rest of the, the, the prime and subprime residential sectors in London. And the previous week, James, sale of the week would have been uh, Chalcot Square that achieved a record uh, price per square foot. And those that know that beautiful part of London understand yeah. why. So uh, some big sales in uh, big prestigious yeah. locations. Yeah, no, great address over in Primrose Hill. Um, you know, always, always hugely popular proximity uh, to the park, to the garden square they have there. Very, very strong uh, price, and they all seem to achieve. Just in terms of uh, Rob, what, what, what the, what sectors in the London market? What, what's, what's performing at the moment? Where, where's the, uh, where, where's the main hive of activity? Yeah, I think we're seeing the investment market really outperform most other asset classes. Uh, and it's not surprising in the sense that they're high yielding, higher rewarding for those investors. Yes, asset management driven requires uh, a, a lot of work to maintain hmm. and keep those income streams running. At the same time, it uh, provides better rewards in a, um, a debt market that's currently still expensive. So we've seen really strong market there this year, James, and I see that continuing uh, um, in, into the future. Yeah, I, th I think a a as interest rates uh, have risen over the last 12 to 18 months, uh, the yields which are being achieved has also, also been uh, pushed out and have really boosted the landlord's returns, which I think ha has caused more uh, people to enter th that residential investment market. Uh, despite it being slightly more labour intensive, there is there is returns there. It's not uncommon for there to be, you know, uh, eight, nine, ten, um, or beyond in terms of the return which can be achieved on the, the multi-unit unit freehold blocks, uh, which um, a lot of existing stock, but also uh, investors buying into blocks to convert them or add additional units just to try and uh, boost what, what their return is on, on the investment. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've, we've uh, had quite a few meetings in the last few weeks uh, with the specialist lenders in those areas and you know who you are and there's a reason why you're performing well because it's a great a asset class um, that requires expertise and knowledge and specialism from all angles whether it's valuation or lending uh, but it clearly outperforming a lot of other asset classes currently. Yeah, and just uh, whilst we're focused on that sector, uh, multiple dwellings relief uh, set to be abolished 1st of June 2024, just leaving a, a small window uh, between now and then for, for landlords to capitalise on that slight sort of tax efficiency. Is that going to have any impact on the market, Rob? That's a good question, James. I'm, I'm not sure it will have a huge impact, but at the same time, uh, the opportunistic landlord... Uh, I'm sure we'll be aware of that and take advantage of it. Yeah, I might be trying to pr price that in 20 uh, future transactions or just trying to uh, wrap it up in, uh, in their own purchase costs and try and reflect that uh, on the ROI and the, and the gross yields which they'll be, uh, be achieving. <clears throat> just in terms of the delivery of uh, housing, Rob, and um, 
obviously after the pandemic we had uh, you know construction kept kept going throughout we had more activity more purchases in the residential market um, new homes built this year were about just under 12 percent drop on last year. Um, it's the first decline we've seen since the pandemic. Um, during that time we have also had the Help to, help to Buy scheme which has uh, ceased. Uh, I'm not, not sure uh, what direct impact that, that has had on the delivery of units but in terms of those first-time buyers who made up quite a high proportion uh, of the buyers within that sector um, it now leaves uh, a void in its place. Uh, government at the moment is, is silent on any uh, new policies which might replace that. Uh, but in terms of uh, affordability, there is now uh, you know, a slightly wider gap uh, than we had previously when the Helps Buy scheme was running. Interesting on that, Rob, as well, the, the government's target, the, the 300,000 homes a year target, obviously um, back in 2022 got downgraded to advisory after it was sort of the actual delivery versus the, 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 the policy was sort of so sort of poles apart that that's been downgraded to uh, advisory with a, a sort of uh, ultimate aim of achieving that 300,000 dwellings new dwellings being built per annum, uh, but I can't, can't see that being achieved for some time. The only thing I'd add on that, James, is that when you're in a flat market or a tough market, that a lot of schemes get mothballed, developers land bank and hold their ground. And so I think you know, that's just normal in cycles, maybe uh, in 25, 26, 27, as Hopefully, stronger market conditions return, those numbers will increase. That's it. And just on the uh, absolute flip side of, of the market, uh, we've spoken to a number of our clients about it directly and presented to them uh, about just the deliver delivery of branded residencies and those super high-end uh, schemes, which we have seen. Um, it's almost a new product in, in the market, really, in terms of uh, how, how it's grown, in terms of the, the pipeline of developments there. Uh, definitely more activity at the complete opposite end of the market, yeah. but in that space. And I think that will continue. That trend is an upward only trend. Uh, taking the market uh, holistically as a whole, Rob, um, you know, we, we track a number of indices uh, and what uh, a number of analysts in, 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 in the sector predict. Um, house price indices, such as you know the main ones, uh, Halifax, uh, na nationwide, the growth has been very, very small and steady, which isn't necessarily what we've seen ac across all the market sectors. But on a whole, uh, that is where we've been, and I think that's that's generally been driven off the uh, demand for the uh, houses of, of a smaller lot size, and actually within that sector. The, the prevalence of uh, public transport links into towns and cities uh, has become uh, a more crucial factor for buyers in that space, that sort of being in more isolated areas as we saw sort of in that period of sort of 24 months ago, uh, that, that's subdued. Now the focal point is more uh, towards how it was before on the, those transport links in, into cities, uh, amenities, and you know, like we said, Rob, People still having a slight preference for houses over flats um, if they can make that sort of affordability work. Yeah, I think also the marketplace in general is at a really interesting point now, James. You know, we've probably been with a hundred banks and lending institutions this year, and the sentiment is good, positive, ready to go. At the same time. The handbrake is still on, so people are in their cars, their foot is on the pedal, they're, they're revving up, but the handbrake is on, and the market's just waiting for that interest rate decrease. And you know, my intuition and feeling, and having been trading how we've been trading over the last year and a half, and using my 30 years' experience, it, it's just around the corner now, James. We are two, three, four months away from that interest rate decrease, followed by an election, and then you're going to see an upturn in activity. And I think everyone's excited for that. Everyone is excited to just get out there and do business. And I don't think we're far off that. Hopefully we're getting close, um, just in terms of 
uh, where we are in the economy. Inflation is now um, un under control. It just needs uh, a little bit of impetus, like you say, Rob, just to kickstart the market, uh, have people re-enter the market, uh, drive that ac activity. Super Prime UK wouldn't be Super Prime UK without some Premier League football talk, James. The season is nearing end. Where are you at? What are your thoughts? Ah, oh, well, just in terms of the, 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 the championship, Man City always finish so strong, don't they? I mean, the last five, five fixtures, 100% record, five wins. Uh, Arsenal just slipping up in, in that one game. But um, what was it? A, a bird in the hands worth two in the bush. What, what, what do you reckon for the run in? Who's going to win it? I think you'd be very brave to bet against City. Uh, if the footballing gods want Arsenal to win, it will happen. I think the smart mm. money uh, is, is City to go four in a row. Yeah. I, I didn't see it going down to a two-horse race. Liverpool just seemed to have had that sort of uh, collapse, obviously, Klopp's leaving, they're sort of in talks to agree the new manager, but it, it doesn't seem to have really, uh, you know, spurred the team on at all, just, yeah. just for a strong finish. And where are you on the Champions League, James? At, at Wembley, is it going to be an all-German final or is it going to be Real Madrid against Paris? Yeah, I think it might be Real Madrid versus Dortmund, actually, after, after the strong display. Um, I think... I, I think Real Madrid will have t too much ultimately, uh, attacking-wise. Uh, so, you know, thrilling games that the, the Real Madrid Man, Man City, uh, two, two thrillers there. Um, I, I think they're going to have too much. I think it's a hard one to call. I think go in any direction. I just think remember the last time uh, Munich and uh, Dortmund were in the final. It was at Wembley. It will be there again. A bit of that mm. playing around, but. Yeah, yeah. Possibly, possibly Paris Madrid and yeah. possibly Madrid win. FA Cup final foregone conclusion. Uh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I think you De know, deja vu. Could be, uh, could be another double for for City. Yeah, and, and going down is it is it going to be Luton? The Forest going to escape? I think, I think, barring uh, more sanctions, I think it it, it will be Luton that will go down. Yeah. Thanks, James. Great to have you back. Great to have you back, that the audience and listeners. Without you, we don't have anything. Uh, great to hear, see you, have you all back again in Super Prime UK. And we will see you all again soon. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thanks very much, everyone.